known as the Canadian otter. They are the biggest otter we have here at the sanctuary. They're type of the 13 species of otter across the world. They certainly are the largest. The largest is of course the giant otter and the giant otter can measure up to seven foot in length. These girls are very, very dear to us as they are third generation otters to us. Their grandmother Ontario was one of the very first Canadian otters we ever had here at the sanctuary. She was lucky enough to make it to the wonderful age of 26 years old. In the wild, a Canadian otter wouldn't usually live past the age of around about 10. So they, she was a very, very old lady. She then produced a lovely daughter called Splash. Splash got to 21. And we did used to be able to climb into this enclosure with Splash to enjoy a nice hand feet at our feet. Although once Splash had had the twin girls, they do have different ideas. So although they are very gentle for hand feeding over the enclosure, it is a different story when I am inside. They allow me about 20 minutes to clean their pool, and if I do not get out of their enclosure within that time, they will be running towards me at full speed, trying to charge at me and rugby tackle me into the ground. Yep, then, so they'll have to do chicken feet. The biggest question we are always asked about the girls is why aren't they continuing their family line? We did offer them males when they were very, very young, but unfortunately they are not interested in men whatsoever. This isn't too uncommon for a North American otter, as in the wild they will do everything they can to avoid the males. If they don't want any children, they can even put on hold fertilization and pregnancy for up to a year. So in actual reality, they would never actually have to see a male if they chose not to. When they do get together with a male, it is solely for less than a day, and it is just for breeding purposes. They will then be kicking them out of their territory as they do prefer to live all by themselves. They will usually look after a cub for around about a year, but then unfortunately the cub is on its own and will have to find its own way to survive. These girls have been struggling a little bit in this heat, as Canadian otters are used to temperatures more around the lines of minus 22 degrees underwater. So obviously having 34 degree weather has been a bit of a strain on our lovely ladies. The girls are 17 years old now. So Winnie is definitely the most dominant otter in this enclosure. She has adopted Peggy pretty much as her mother. She will drag her round by her ear. She tells her when to go to bed. She tells her where she can go. And she generally pushes her off the rock if she doesn't get food first. <laughs> Peggy really doesn't mind though. She is quite submissive and she has just taken on the fact that Winnie has adopted her. So she is a very, very good girl and she will do anything that Winnie tells her to do. Peggy is more noticeable at the moment as she does have a small lump on the side of her cheek. This is nothing to worry about and she has been treated with antibiotics and painkillers. It is just caused by a little bit of an abscess on her tooth at the moment and she can sometimes get this but they will live a lot longer in captivity, partly because we do love to pamper our otters. They get fed three to four times every single day, so they always know that they are going to go to bed with nice full tummies. They also have access to veterinary care, along with no habitat destruction at all. We do like to try and look after their enclosures as much as possible, as well as providing the best care we can for all of our otters. So as soon as these lovely ladies have finished their supper, we will be moving down to Sammy and Sky. I can't promise Sky is going to be awake, because out of all of our otters, she is terrified of loud noises. She does think that she's a person, so if she doesn't come out and join us for the feed, I will give her some nice tea in bed. <laughs> All right. All right. Is that enough?